What's up, guys? Welcome back to Wrench Capital Charts. Today, we're taking a look at Intel stock, ticker symbol INTC, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day, Tuesday, February 20th. Well, Intel stock on Friday finished the day down about 54 cents a share, 1.23%. However, it is up. You know, we're looking at about 63 cents ish after hours. So when you include that after hours movement, it's actually a net positive on uh, really the entirety of the day here. But listen, as always, you'll hear me say this all the time. Even if the after hours movement is in your favor, or if it's against you for that matter, you always have to take it with a grain of salt because volume is very low. But that being said, listen, if I'm a bull, right, I'd, ra I'd rather the stock up, you know, 60 some cents after hours than, than flat or down. So let's take a look here, starting on the one minute chart. Again, you know, the, the primary objective is, of this video is to take a look at Intel as we head into Tuesday. You guys know I'm a scalper at heart, um, so I'm always thinking about how can we generate revenue intraday around a core position. So let's just briefly start here on the one, on the one minute chart and take a look at any potential opportunity we may have seen on Friday that we can maybe look to replicate on Tuesday. Now, a couple of things. If we zoom in here on Intel, I know a lot of you guys, you know, maybe if you're trading bigger intraday moves, that's your style. Maybe you would have been looking to catch this downside break of volume weighted average price. Sure, you could have caught that, you know, tried it a couple of times, gotten stopped out with very minimal risk. And then that, you know, second, third, fourth time it works and you cover it all. That's great if that's you. Um, a lot of you guys might be looking to scalp these little pull-ins to the EMAs. That's great. Listen, for me, I have found through lots of forward testing and uh, expensive forward testing for that matter over, over years, I have found that the majority of setups, at least in my playbook and the majority of, of big traders' playbooks, the majority of those setups, they, they only have real significant edge on stocks that are in play. Fresh catalyst, right? Elevated relative volume, trading around a tremendously important technical level that leads to elevated volume, you know, bigger than normal ATR, testing that ATR. You know, it stands for average true range. So, you know, honestly, I'm not really interested in trading the majority of setups on a stock like Intel, at least on Friday, because I wouldn't say Intel was necessarily in play by that definition um, on Friday. There were, there were a lot more in play options by the way that's not a dig at intel stock please understand that it's just the way it was on friday it's just there was better opportunity for a scalper uh intraday has nothing to do with the the core position at all but when that's the case we're stuck looking at at not not stuck but we're left with looking at potential opportunities that don't require the stock to be in play Okay, one of those is my uh, backbone setup, the primary setup that I teach that we can really trade on any stock that's liquid enough, that has enough volume, and it's a setup that I developed and I call it the repeat offender. Unfortunately, first of all, if you guys want to learn more about that, it, it's, it's a lot easier, I think, to just take a look at the link in the pinned comment. We have lots of education on these things in the Wrench Capital Gold server. And Intel's a stock I watch every day for this style of setup. Unfortunately, there just wasn't any opportunity at all for that style of setup on Friday. But I'm going to be watching again on Tuesday to see if um, either the stock itself is in play, in which case a lot of the playbook is open, or if not, you know, we have one of the, the more of a backbone setup uh, approach here. Let's move on now and let's move away from the intraday mentality and look more at a day-to-day -day mentality by looking at the five-minute chart, and to be more specific, the volume on the five-minute chart to see if we can get any really obvious sentiment, okay, out of Intel uh, from Friday. So we look here, now listen, first of all, ignore this volume candle, okay? I think we have to. So even if it was a legitimate volume candle, it wasn't a massive candle, okay? And it's within reason enough that we could have seen this much volume, unfortunately, data on the street a lot of people don't don't know this i would call it almost a monopoly okay there are a few big companies that provide data to all of the brokers so when one of them has a data error it gets pushed to, to a number of brokers and then everyone thinks it's always real all the time it's not always the case okay but this is still you know it's five million shares it's within reason but still it's it, it's the candle 
after the close. So what I'm really after here is the more intraday stuff that we can try to pull some context out of. So you see here, like, okay, we had this big downside move. Did we see really elevated selling volume during that time, leading us to believe that, okay, a huge sample size of the market agreed with that, and then when the stock bounced, the volume tanked off. We didn't really get that. So, you know, bears, I wish I had better news, but unfortunately, it's just, there's not a very obvious shift in volume from the time where before that started to when that was happening to when the, the stock then bounced back upside. There just wasn't enough volume shift, okay? So let's move on here to the 30 minute and start looking at the really, really important day-to-day -day psychological self-fulfilling prophecy indicators on the ever so popular 200 period and 50 period moving averages on starting with the 30 minute chart. Again, always looking at a number of different time frames. Okay, so you can see here on the 30 minute, the 200 period and the 50 period both in play. The 50 period is immediately relevant. Here's what I'm looking for if I'm a bull. I ideally just want to see a hold of that 50 period as support and then a bounce up away from these two levels. Okay. Now, if I'm a bear, it gets a little more complicated. Ideally, I really want to see the stock below the 200 period because it's the lowest moving average that's so heavily watched here, the self fulfilling prophecy, remember, on the 30 minute. So ideally, if I'm a bear, come Tuesday, I not only want to see a downside break through that 50 period, that white line, but really I want to see a test and a failed test of that 200 period, meaning cracking downside below both of these come Tuesday on the 30 minute in particular. Now let's take a look at the four hour. You can see here that the 50 period is immediately relevant here on the four hour. If I'm a bull, and, and by the way, that's approximately a 1.8%, 1.9% downside move. If I'm a bull, ideally, I wouldn't even want to see a test of that. I just want to see a pull away up toward that 200 period. But first, it, you know, of course, that's psychological level of 45 bucks a share. But if we do see a retest of that 50 period, obviously bulls, we're going to want to see a hard, hard hold as support like we've seen the last two times we've tested that bears. Really, you're just looking for a downside crack down below that white line, that 50 period. Okay, kind of like a lookout below scenario. Uh, discourage the bulls, encourage the bears is what bears are looking for here. Bulls, just understand, you know, the psychology of the other side. It's always arguably more important than the psychology of your own side. So let's now move on to what is arguably the most important chart here, the daily. Everybody's looking at the daily chart. Okay. And you can see here that we're currently be between the 200 day and the 50 day, but we're closer to the 50 day. And that 50 day is approximately a 5% move away. So that's, you know, we've seen crazier things, but that's still quite a move away. Here's what I'm really watching on the, uh, the daily chart. Okay. 45 bucks is 3.3% away. And we know that that's a psychological and technical level on Intel. So bulls, my immediate target is just to reclaim 45 bucks a share. We've struggled to do so since earnings. And 45 is really what we want to reclaim. That way we can open up a retest of the 50 day and start pushing higher toward 50. 50 bucks a share. Okay. Bears, obviously, you don't want to see a reclaim of 45. That's been helping you out tremendously as of late. So ideally, bears, you would want to see us push lower and crack down beneath that like 42 region. Because really, your ultimate goal is get beneath 40 bucks a share. Right. If you're a bear here on this name. Let's finish out here by taking a look at the options bias. What are the options traders telling us and how are they positioning themselves on Friday as we head in to uh, Tuesday here? Good sample size, 165,000 total contracts traded on Friday. We can get some good data out of there. 107,000 calls, 57,000 puts. So we are seeing a relatively heavy call side bias here uh, on Friday. Okay. So, you know, bulls, you should, uh, you're looking at that and you're liking that. Now understand this is just one factor of many, okay? But the short-term speculators, the 0 to 20 out of the money delta range, 38,000 calls, 25,000 puts. Again, call side bias. And if we look here at basically all of the out of the money and at the money uh, contracts, we're also seeing call side bias. Okay, the volume then becomes really low in the in the money contracts to the point where we have to take that with a, a very much so a grain of salt. But with the higher volume, the at the money, the 41 to 60, the slightly out of the money, 21 to 40, and the really out of the money, the zero to 20, we're seeing 
uh, call side bias on all of those fronts as well as a heavy call bias on the overall. Listen, if you got value out of this video, please subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. I'm uploading videos every single day and I'll see you in the next one.